everyone. This is Gary from morethanasnapshot.com. And I wanted to come to you today with some composition tips for bird photography. I went to a special presentation last night at my camera club. And the speaker was Michael Militia. And he specializes in bird photography. And I thought that he had some really great images and some really great ideas. And some, especially some ideas for composition with birds. And since this month at morethanasnapshot.com, we're doing all kinds of tips on composition. So I think it's interesting to find a specialty like bird photography. And I'll probably also look for other specialties to look at what they do for composition. So we'll be looking at some of his photos and uh, we'll be looking at some tips. So please visit his website and check out his photo tours and uh, workshops. So uh, just take a look at his pages here, his images. So first off, when photographing birds, it's helpful if the bird is coming towards you. And I'll see if I can make this image work. Yes, and so when the bird's coming directly towards you, it often makes for an interesting composition. Those usually work well most of the time. And you frequently will see birds going across. If they're going directly across your plane, as in these two shots, that usually works well too. And what tends to work sometimes even better is if you have a bird coming across a little bit angled towards you. Here we have a nice shot where we have some parts of the image frozen and some parts blurred. Um, also along those lines, when you have a moving bird, you can see in all three of these cases with your composition, you want to leave room in front of the bird so that it has room to move through the picture. Um, so that's another interesting tip. Um, he also mentioned that when photographing a bird on the ground, I'm going to see if I can find a shot that's similar, or a shot that will work for this explanation. Uh, like in this case, you should generally try to include the bird's feet in the shot. And you may have to just sit and wait for the bird to hop up on a little mound or something to try to get the, the whole bird in the shot. In this particular case, he explained that he liked this one anyway. The story is strong enough to get away with not being able to see the bird's feet. And I agree with it. It's, it's a great image. And you can get away with not seeing the feet in that shot. But when you can, try to include the bird's feet. And if the bird is in water, like in this shot, let me see if I can find one. Um, well, anyway, this shot, the bird is in water. We can't see where the bird's feet is because it's underwater, but in your composition, he says, you should try to leave some room where the feet would be. So you don't want to crop too tight and, you know, make the bird feel crowded in the image. All right. And the other thing he talks about is head tilt. And so having a bird that is tilted towards you, showing a little bit of expression and a little personality or a little bit of a nature story uh, is going to make for a much more impactful image. So this shot, uh, the bird is angled towards us a little bit. It doesn't have the... the the big head tilt that he was talking about, but it does have uh, uh, interesting expression. The bird's mouth is open, or the beak is open, and so that works. Let me see if I can find one that had a little bit more of a head tilt. Uh, this one, the bird's held, head is tilted towards us in a, comp in a pleasing way, and we can see the catch light in the eye. So that would be another tip. He explained that uh, it's really important to get a catch light in the eye because it adds a little life to the bird. And if your subject to get the catch light in the eye obviously has to be um, almost front lit or side lit. And if it's not, if it's back lit, that's not the best, usually the best kind of lighting. It does produce a nice rim lighting effect on the bird, but oftentimes when you do that, the front of the bird becomes very dark. So about the only thing you can do in that kind of situation is to try to use a fill flash to 
to m remove the shadows in the front of the bird. So remember that the story and the personality of the bird is what you're trying to show and you want to try to show it off the best that you can. So I hope those tips are helpful. If you have any bird shots that show any of those tips, please put them in the comments below or ask any other questions that you might have. Again, thank you. This has been Gary D. Tonicourt from morethanasnapshot.com.